whatever milestones that black people make against hate, it ends up benefiting all the other people of color. I can't see what his end game is. The Republican Party is the party of racism, is the party of white supremacy, is the party of hate. This is wrong and it needs to stop. Everybody wants to go back and drag that piece of history up, but they don't want to go back and deal with what their ancestors did to the indigenous people and to black people in this country. Uh-uh, you got to go. And you got billionaires talking about going to space and Jeff Bezos, go, never come back. I hope you get lost. This man has lost his mind. Boom, come on, girlfriend. Come on, girlfriend. What is up, everybody? It's Dr. Vibe here, host and producer of the award-winning Dr. Vibe show, the home of Epic Conversations, and I'm the host of Epic Conversations 2020, Best Podcast News Award winner, 2018 Innovation Award winner given by the Canadian Ethnic Media Association. Also, I co-host and co-produce the only online show in the world for dads and fathers that's sponsored by Dove Men Plus Care. As always, uh, too, I like to say you're blessed, highly favored, a magnet for miracles, and a solution for someone's problem. Let's get a little of um, homework out of the way first. Where you're watching this, subscribe to the Dr. Vibe Show on YouTube. If you do it on YouTube, subscribe and also hit the notification bell. So when you hit the notification bell, you get notified of upcoming Epic Conversations. Also, you can like it on Facebook and wherever else you're watching these Epic Conversations live or on replay. And if you are watching this before February 16th, 2013, you have the opportunity to join the last of the three-part series I'm co-hosting in collaboration with Innovation Guelph about how to launch, launch your podcast. So the link is there, and it's an hour and a half of Ask Me Anything About Podcasting. Now, just remember, I don't know everything, but I know enough. I've done 4,000 of these, so I think I can pass for most, most people in regards to questions that they have. So, as always, please, if you have the time, check it out. Uh, let's do a little, a uh, few quick things before we jump on live here. But, you know, I'll save it for that. Let's bring up our two wonderful friends who are with us. Aisha was here last week. We did it on Sunday. And Jill is back. Lala is still a little bit un, a little bit occupied, but she will be back with us. She is with us in spirit. And hello, Jen Myers. Hope you're doing well. And Jill and Aisha, how are you doing? Much better Good. than I was. So I'm thankful. <laughs> You know, Good. We're glad to have you convalescing back. Convalescing a little bit from, um, you know, COVID. It wasn't as serious. It was, I kid you not, I didn't think I was going to get it, but it just sort of snuck up on me after my husband got it. And, and then that was that. It was like, you know, just discombobulated. And the fever is really what was, for me, yeah. maybe the worst part of it. Yeah. And the fatigue, okay. you know. So, but I'm starting to go out and walk again and walk on my walks. And that's, that's it. That's all I can do. Very Thank nice. God. Very nice. Aisha, how you doing? I'm good. <laughs> good. Good. What's been Very going good. on in your world? Well, I have a new job that starts on the 21st. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I'll be working with the Funders Committee for Civic Participation. Mm. focusing on um, democracy, inequality. So I'm very excited about that. Um, and uh, just trying to get through this schizophrenic weather Connecticut's having. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I posted it yesterday. But yesterday was like 61 degrees, but a week ago it was negative eight when I woke up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so, like, right now it's 30, but tomorrow it's supposed to be 50-something and yeah. 50 all week. It's the yeah. same here. It's going, like, 39 at, at night and then 75 in the day. And then now it's back down to 50 in the day. It's it's really all over the place, uh, really. Mm. Well, we I, have blame, to I blame the Martians. <laughs> okay. No, <laughs> no, no, no balloons. The UFOs are making the weather Crazy. Yeah, okay. you know. Damn. Black Beauty says, 
Hi, everyone. Also says, Jill, you are looking marvelous. <laughs> Number one would know. Is there something I'm missing no there? No one would know. Uh, no, oh, no, no one. one oh, sorry. Yeah. No <laughs> one. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. My bad. My bad. And Thank then you. she also says, are you sure you as well looking marvelous on your end? Congratulations on your new opportunity, Ali, Aisha. Thank so, you, darling. Yes. Very and, excited. And yes, and and she, you know, there were there were two people that you family may know that helped her with references on that little new. Yes, uh, Jill and Doctor yes. Vibe were very instrumental. Yes. Look, they they had five references. Okay, and um, you, you, you what I know, heard was that. <laughs> Go on. I, I I gotta say something about their their referencing. There was something I didn't like about the process. But go on. Yes, five references, and um, because um, you know, it it was a a a, um, a search committee actually, you know, recruited me for it, and um, five Damn, references. There's like Blade Runner they, around got, here. What the hell is outside my window? <laughs> when the, look, when I got the feedback, helicopter one, just flew by. <laughs> Look, when I got the feedback about the references, they were like, oh my gosh, you had such great references and such a variety of people. How'd you put that together? I'm thinking to myself, I went with who was available. <laughs> mm -hmm. By hook or But hook. I knew that everyone that I selected was a great person and that um, you know, we had really good working relationships. I I the process, the online process, there was one thing I didn't like. They they asked you. Oh, what things do you feel she could approve on? And you had to, and you had to answer that. And I didn't like that. Like it was well, almost like I just want to say the person that spoke with you, Dr. Vibe, she had a lot to say about you. She was very flattering. She enjoyed talking with you. She said she could talk with you again. I was like, my God, what did he say? <laughs> I'm just a nice guy most of the time. Yeah. She's like, I really enjoyed that. He was just yeah. such an interesting. So he's man. Canadian, you know. <laughs> Canadian people are the nicest yeah. people. Dead well, giveaway hey, that he was well, in America, you know. Well, like, I'm oh, surprised man. neither of you are asking me about what happened to the to make Toronto mayor. The Ooh. mayor. Oh, exactly. okay. So. So I know most of the people are south of the border here, but we have a gentleman. His name is John Tory. He's going. He was going to his third term, and nine o'clock last night he has a press conference. So you're going nine o'clock on a Friday. So he's probably in his sixties or seventies. He admitted to having an affair with a former uh, person he managed, a thirty-one year old. Oh, good for him. <laughs> you know Look, let me tell you something. There's a reason that is not bad. There's a reason they call Connecticut Corrupticut because <laughs> we have had a series of mayors who had like about maybe what 20 years ago, in the early 2000s, there was a mayor who was running for re-election. It came out that his girlfriend, who is a prostitute, he was having a sexual relationship with her eight-year-old niece and 13-year-old daughter. And that was how he had to say he wasn't running anymore. Yeah. So, so he, he had a press conference. Year old age difference. What's yeah, wrong yeah. with your mayor, though? What was his? Is it just because of that, or what else? Yeah. He so he he said he was going to be resigning, mm -hmm. and then I, I don't know if he had it. Like I haven't dug deeply into it, but people have been telling me that he, I don't know if he had in the press conference last night or he had another one today. He came out front and said we had we had a consensual sexual relationship. Were they doing it on office time? Well, here's the Question. here's the funny thing. So, Jill, I hope you're still with us. Your camera's off. But here's the funny thing. He was having the affair with her. The the, the affair allegedly has ended. But okay. this was this was during the pandemic. How are you doing that? Yeah, but, <laughs> you got me right. I am going. Okay, how did you have time? Now I got some weird noises going on. It sounds Jill's like car. a wind chime. Yeah. Does Jill, have a, does Jill have a wind chime going? Jill. Jill, are you <laughs> like like Jill's I'm going? Am I A right now? Jill, am I okay? So what I'm gonna do? We're gonna until she comes back. Yeah, until we come, like I'm hearing these wind chimes going. Okay, that is so. Oh my gosh, you know what though? I think there might be more to it, Doctor Vibe, because that it that is is he single or is he married? No, he's married. 
been married for uh, a okay. while. Okay, so okay, yeah. that's the that's the issue. Okay, it'd be different yeah. if he was if he was single, but um, the wind I, I mean, it are can't be, look, look, it can't be any worse than what um, what's his name, my former governor, um, when I lived in South Carolina, Sanford did. I mean, Sanford stood in front of his wife and said that he was in love with the mistress. So oh, at least, wow. look, at least, look, at least your mayor didn't drag his wife up to the uh, press conference with yeah. him and embarrass her. Yeah, but he said, yeah, he he said he was going to be resigning and he's going to take time to work on his like his relation with his family. But here's the other thing about about a number in the last year that deputy mayor had a lawsuit against him alleging him of some impropriety sexually with a young so both the mayor and but he didn't resign like he's just he represents a riding but he's a deputy mayor and he had to basically resign from committees and things like that like he's still in place but it's unfortunate because a he lot of people mayor? thought that he was going to be next in line right to be mayor now if, if he would have a lot of people saying if he would have behaved himself his path to become mayor would be a clear thing, but now he can't even run right now for the election that's coming up in the next few months. Well, will he at least oh, take wow. over for the mayor that stepped down? He can't. Oh, so who does? What you're, there's, uh, you're there, there is there, there is a well, he's not the deputy mayor anymore. So the mm -hmm. lady who is there's a lady now who is the deputy mayor. She is now going to fill in until they have an election. Oh wow! So yeah, I'm looking to see. Who would be the person that comes out with the press conference for Toronto? I, well, no, he, he, he had the press conference last night. He did it himself. So, so like the lieutenant governor and all those people, are they commenting? Because I don't know. Oh, well, there, there, there are different right. people. I think right now people are in such shock. Mm -hmm. wow. And then I you guys had your episode today. So it kind of took the heat off of him yeah, I, a little like, bit so with, you yeah, guys so pay too he, much attention to um, the United States. What are you doing up there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like people are, you know. It, you so, guys look like Spitzer and Wiener and all that. Stuff. <laughs> so uh, let's say hello, April Watson. Hi from Tampa. Welcome, April. I don't think I've seen, we've seen you before. So welcome to the family. And yeah, share night, a, a share night of while. Ebony Occasions. And by the way, Ebony Occasions celebrated their third anniversary this week as a company. So congratulations on your three-year anniversary. And she says, yeah, congratulations, Aisha, sorry, Aisha. With Thanks, regard Sharon. to our mayor, I agree. It's more to it. He did a poor job of getting ahead of it. Alleged, alleged, a news, yeah, a oh, newspaper wow. broke the story first. And it's interesting because I was talking to someone in the last hour said she knew about this about a month ago. She was talking. Oh, wow. So she heard of rumblings about a month ago about this. So definitely uh, who knows if there's more to come? Who knows if the lady who he was involved with is going to say anything? Right. Uh, I mean, if you're taking after the United States at this point, it, it, it ultimately is going to lead to uh, city money being used to foster and hide this affair. Like, well, I mean, well, that's the, happened so often in politics. Well, the funny thing is he had said he had just won re-election about in the last few months by a huge majority. But he said this was going to be his last term. Mm. So it must have been he must have known it was probably going to come out at some point. Maybe he stopped paying whoever. Don't know, but it's <laughs> whoever um, is keeping quiet. More, more to come. Definitely more to come. But like it just really, you know. Oh, yeah. Sharon Knight sure goes. Sharon Knight, Sharon Knight goes. He needs Olivia Pope. Yeah, he needs an exorcist. That's what he needs. Uh, it's Gil Penalosa. That's his name. No, the mayor's no. name is John Tory. Jill Penalosa oh. was a gentleman who came in second place in the recent mayor's race to John right. Tory. But right. he's already said, I'm going to be running again. It's just going to be interesting to see. Who, there's a number of people who allegedly may come in the race again. But uh, yeah, John Tory, that like, I mean, that blew up Friday night here. And, and a lot of people are just in shock. Like they were going mm -hmm. like, they're just really, really in shock in regards to this one. Greetings, Cinnamon. You're on time this week. I know you came in late last week. I hope you caught the replay. You said you were going to... But yeah, so it's quite. Well, yeah, we can't judge up here, down here. No, you don't do that in America. You don't judge. We can't judge down here because um, 
We got Congress <laughs> people who, we got Congress people who can't even tell the truth about who they are. Not on, even a bright right note, they, <laughs> on a bright note in Turkey, they pulled a baby out. It's either a Turkey or Syria. A baby survived after 128 hours under the rubble. They We're just rescued get to that him. story. Yes, and there's some, some incredible. Yeah, I saw some other ones there. like a a a, a five year old and um, some family members had like survived like in this little tiny hole, like it just like this little kind of like a like everything fell in around them, but they were safe by that just Crazy. that. Yeah, it was. It was We're oof, definitely going to get to that. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So let's look at this. Regina, we just say doctor vibe throwing shade. LOL. Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, you know what? I, I, I'm humbled when you make comments on me because the ladies are the stars of the show. I'm just, I'm just, the, I'm just hanging out, you know, that's all I'm doing. But let's get to the com. Let's get to the first comments on last week, the state of the union speech. Who mm -hmm. child. <laughs> First of all, I have to say that was probably one of the best speeches Joe Biden gave ever. Right. Um, he was alert, he was awake. <laughs> he was awake. Um and and he did very good in terms of getting Republicans to walk into things. Mm -hmm. I was I was stunned here. Now let me tell you, I spent the whole night myself watching Kevin McCarthy's reaction because I'm like you know, clearly there's some things here that the Republicans can agree on. They couldn't even clap for democracy. I mean, we, we, no. in the, what is it? The party that's about uh, lower taxes couldn't right. clap for lower taxes. Right. I, I just thought that it was just, it was shameful. And and James Carville said it right about Marjorie Taylor Greene. He called her white trash. He said he had a degree <laughs> yeah. in white trashology and she was white trash. Totally. And she was over there looking like a Pomeranian and mm -hmm. screaming her lungs out. Like I, I, I mean, there were any number of things that you could have you could have um, described her as between her and Kristen Cinema. Unhinged over the the. I wish somebody had a split screen of the two of them. You know, <laughs> yeah. Kristen Cinema in her dress that Adele rejected from the Grammys, and right. um, <laughs> this one looking like a China um, balloon. Right. And the two of them just sitting there. Um, but at least Kristen behaved. Um, but Marjorie Taylor Greene, the fact that Kevin McCarthy. That's because Kristen promised all the men after this afterwards. So she was she had done her business. Hell, well, Jill. well, no. Well, you know, she already had her little Jill. meeting with Kevin, though. She's she already promised had it to the Kevin. women, too. <laughs> but, you know, I am. Whoever wants it. I think it was very clever how Joe Biden let the Republicans walk into this. Here's what I don't understand, how they fell into the whole Social Security thing. It's not like they didn't have a copy of the speech beforehand. They, they still walked into it knowing what the speech said, okay? And, and you know, I, I mean, he got them on TV to admit that they won't do it. But again, like he said, it's going to be the, the proof is in the pudding. For me, the more interesting part about this really, it wasn't who was there. It was that crazy, insane, wackadoodle Sarah Huckabee Sanders afterwards. Ooh, I know. When she called the, she described all this stuff and then said the choice is between sane and crazy. You're the party of crazy. What are you talking about? But even more, I think the most egregious thing was, and, and um, some people did cover this today, I saw in the news, but she was talking about the Little Rock Nine and, and the statue of them and, and, and how they're such heroes, but didn't mention that, you know, yeah, they integrated the schools and you put a statue of them right next to three Confederate soldier statues. Right. Let, let's let's be honest about this. But her, I, I mean, she had, she had all of the, I mean, she checked every box of all their scare tactics and words, the woke mob and CRT this and, uh, you know, trans kids this. I mean, she just hit on everything um, Arkansas. that, because yeah, everything that's Arkansas a cultural issue to them. Culturally you, viable as anything. Kill, there's yeah. something wrong with your audio. You sound like yeah. you're hollow. But the, I do? Now, now better. you're better. Okay. But I think... 
the, the thing of it is, is that it was such a juxtaposition because Joe Biden specifically talked about things that will improve people's lives. When he talked, they couldn't clap for lower, uh, for a $35 cap on insulin. And I know right. some of them are diabetic. They don't care, but they're, they, they come across like abusers. I'll be honest. I think mm. the GOP party is a very abusive party. I think that they come across as uh, this, I don't know, like you freaking went into like, you know, Annie's home of the orphanage. They're like the orphanage. You know what I mean? Like freak, like G the GOP party comes across like an orphanage from the 1930s. Look and at Trump is in his hand again. Right. And he's in his <laughs> hand again. Because I'm telling you that they do. And then one for all and all for one. You know, you've got like this Asian, these Asian women who try to front, who, who basically came from a rice field in their life, immigrating here, standing up with the whole thing, like down with immigration. And I'm like, you weak, spineless little, you know, it's like, I have no respect for any of them. the same with, with the grifting, you know, stripper, Anna Paulina Luna, who basically the reason her name is Luna is because her name probably wasn't on her birth certificate in California in that year for illegitimate babies. They didn't tend to put the name of the father on there. Bitch probably didn't change her name at all. She just had to use it. No, she, actually added, she actually added that before she ran. I'm telling you, in 1989... We're going to get to her. We're going to get to her. It was just yeah, our last talking yeah. point tonight, okay. definitely. But, okay, but, you so, know, I, I think okay. that there were, there was, you know, for a party that will sit, I can't, I can't stand to sit and watch anything of Fox News. I can only catch it in clips that I see on uh, YouTube or Twitter or whatever. I can't, I just can't stomach it. But when you see those clips, they're like, oh, how come he's not talking about things that are real, you know, kitchen table issues that matter to Americans? That's all he did, that entire almost two hour speech. Let me tell you, for it to be a two hour speech, it was a good speech because I would have been asleep after about 90 minutes. It was minutes. phenomenal. <laughs> okay. It was a long speech. But, um, but he, they, he was very specific about these kitchen table issues and make no mistake, American voters, Republicans told you who they are. They told you what they're going to do, what they're not going to do. And then after the State of the Union, how they showed their asses then on national TV, they then went into committees and showed their all week at those uh, weaponization of, you know, Joe Biden's trying to get people jobs. He's got the highest job numbers of any president. They're talking about weaponization of the government because Twitter took down their posts. Yeah, but my boy Dan Goldman sort of scooped up a few. Oh, snacks yes, he from was some good. Bald heads that he and Max Frost the heads bald. He totally did. But you know, in my mind, I thought this. I thought that it was. Um, I thought it was amazing. Every time I see uh, the hashtag SOTU, I almost always want to go sign of the times, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> don't really like S -O -T -T. State of the Union. Yeah, I always have a little bit of dyslexia when I look at those at, at hashtag, but. I thought Joe was fabulous. It might have been, for me, one of the best State of the Unions I've ever seen, even above even Obama. Barack yeah. Obama. You know, yeah. I just really love that little savvy bit where he came for those, came for her and lured her into a trap. And I said, ooh, that's my Scorpio there. Scorpio. <laughs> Scorpio and, and, will walk you down. And I was looking at Kevin McCarthy's face because... He knows that Joe's very good at that. And he had a look on his face like, oh, man. He looked this like is he like... wanted to be anywhere else but there. But I think that Marjorie Taylor Greene, a few days before that, had been moaning that 174000 I mean, 212000 isn't enough money for her. And she was, you know, singing and washing herself like a monkey at the zoo. She has been doing that since they got him in. It's been like watching a orangutan wash himself. You know, and do things just because she's so vulgar. She's just like, she's just vulgar. And I, it's like, you know, we excuse the orangutans, but this is a person who's supposed to be a human being with social graces. 
ain't got not one. I'm not surprised she didn't sit up and put her feet up and suck her own toes at that stage. Of the <laughs> you're only got right. you're back to the toes again. Awful. You would think she'd be it. more concerned about the fact that she only has three toes than she is about the fact that she's <laughs> exactly. down with She oh, is so awful. You're bad. She's appalling. You're so and then got butt hurt a couple of days later because. It wasn't just the women in Congress who were like, oh, she was mad at the women on The View because they had to say something. Who wouldn't? Child, honey, let me tell you, people gassed it. Men were talking about you. You you, you want to make it like women had a best, honey? They, they've been laying odds on you. Like Other what countries carpet? were talking trash about her. Yeah, like you, she's like one of the most Congresswomen that we have. I think people would choose <laughs> Dianne Feinstein over her. Because no, she's so is, nasty. Oh she gosh. looks, she's just nasty. This she looks like some gosh. roach infested hotel well, look, as a human being. When you take the trailer park to the Thank capital. you. Jill, That's you want me to leave. Is. You want me to leave, Jill. <laughs> That's what this is. She's a <laughs> I mean, And that's the truth. <laughs> she is. And yeah, you can see it. A fur coat too. All the hillbillies, like, rednecks. Where are, all I just want to know, where are her children? They need to, like, I really, like, I would hang my head in shame. She's so awful. And you now know, you want, look, and now she's wondering why Mr. Her Man, with that mannish body okay, she's got. Let me get you to know. some comments before I, I fall off my chair. That was okay. Let me. This is why her so, husband's leaving her. Yeah, because okay. she likes to, don't, she probably role plays. Okay. So Regina says Biden throwing shade was pretty good too. Mm -hmm. People with dementia don't throw Thank shade. Yes. <laughs> Black Beauty mm -hmm. says good call on Marjorie Taylor Greene. Shameful, just shameful. Regina goes, quote, white trash, unquote, will never be removed from my lexicon. Sorry, not sorry. You can't remove it. Um, <laughs> what else we got here? Black Beauty says... Aisha, what's revealing is how the GOP literally has no shame no. on their horrible belief systems for the world to see them as no. they are. And she acted like she was in a Walmart instead of at the State of the mm -hmm. Union. That's I what know. she acted like. You know those pictures of people that go into Walmart with their um, American flag bikini tops on and their underwear with the hole in it and walking through the Walmart, <laughs> you know, rolling with their kids, you know, oh my their kid gosh. that's way too big to be in a carriage exactly. and their feet is dragging on the, yeah. I mean, that that's And what then she they want to go try on clothes. Oh, oh my god. That's what she, I mean, that's what she reminds me of. And it's like, wow. You know, now remember, I lived in Georgia for a little while. She reminds me of those people who are way down deep in the, the, the red Oh, she's from country. that area backwoods areas of of georgia that you that that's why they don't let people like her usually hold office but she's forsyth county if i'm not mistaken she's isn't she forsyth county yeah, she's, she's embarrassing. embarrassing and the state of georgia had better get it together because if you if you continue to let that woman be who she is you're always going to be just one state above mississippi talking about she used to make more money before she became, girl, you well, have a husband who was yeah. working. Your husband worked. You, she's still stripping. And on the side, she was probably stripping. I, I don't, I don't. <laughs> stripping what? Bananas? No, in the Walmart parking lot. Oh, mm. Lord. Oh, please. You ladies, you and MT. And it's all nude there. It's all naked there. Oh, my gosh. Some other comments we got flying in. What a start we've got out of the out of the gates. Regina says the Twitter hearing was hilarious. I predict Lauren and MTG are history after this cycle. Oh, my God. Well, wait, for the first time ever in United States history is part of the congressional the record. record, okay? I know. Because oh of those two. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my God. You know, for real. Oh it's really bad. My. And it was it's embarrassing at this point because you know, these are people making a mockery of situations. She was walking around with a balloon this week in office. And these are people who should not hold a position. And what's really bad about the GOP and the Republicans and the other ones in in the uh, house is why would you ever, why should Michelle Steele keep winning? Oh, because she probably goes and why are her Asian constituents in Orange County voting for her? For the other one too, because they're not doing anything. Um, they're not doing one thing. The interesting thing is a friend of mine who's Vietnamese, 
he said about Orange County when they vote for like, what is it, Michelle Steele, and then there's another one, so-and-so, Kim. Now, mind you, their last names are like Montgomery or, you know, Steinman, Steinbeck or whatever, because they've married white men. But um, what's really interesting is that a lot of older Vietnamese people have come and immigrants come to this country and they hear Republic. Right. So they're and they believe that communism. that's right. And and so, you know, they believe that this is the what they should fall into. It's conservative. It's what they should be doing and voting for. All right. I want to get back. So, I want to get back to get this. Back to the, no, but here, here's my other, my other. But thing they're too. doing nothing. Is my point. They're and not doing, I don't know why they're, they're and they're not anything. going to. And Jim Jordan no, is head of a committee and mm -hmm. still does not have a jacket. I know. Not by a jacket, dude. I know. God. And still <laughs> looks like he's sleeping on the floor of his office. <laughs> he's wearing the same outfit he had on in 2016. I know. The man hasn't washed, taken a bath, anything. He looks dusty. <laughs> I yeah. bet you he smells bad. Let too. me oh let me go. Totally looks like it. Black Beauty says September of 2022, Marty MTG Marty Taylor Greens, her husband filed for divorce. Kudos to him. Black Beauty puts a smile emoji to that. But so uh, the part of Biden's speech, I think, is as not Cole King Cole is unforgettable, is when he, he mentioned about social security. Yes, that was oh, what yeah, he did. and Mike Lee faked shock. Yeah. Dude, all night long, MSNBC ran that tape of you. And Rick Scott I pretending it, like, I Scott. never, I never, what are you talking about? And he's like, it's in the bill that you presented. And <laughs> and even, funny enough, guys, Mitch McConnell, Fox News even was, <laughs> went and addressed Rick Scott straight up on Fox News and said, dude, it says that he goes, well, that's the um, Democrats talking point. You know, and, well, and, and, and the guy and, talking and, point the, too, and the guy on Fox like, said, "It's not a talking point. It's right. in the bill that you want to sunset <laughs> all of these programs." I mean, he he, whoever the guy was, he's somebody on, hateful on Fox, but I had to give him credit because, you know, he did come for him because there's no way you could. They want to get rid of that because they're really fleecing the United States, and now they used to always fleece it when they had somebody in office, but they figured out they'll just fleece it the whole way by stealing everything they can. These people come in and take your rug, the house, the carpet, the nails, they take everything. They'll that's take the, the Republican the party. And they'll, they'll, that's just who they are. They're gross. They are the grossest. They are the villain in every story. But you know, Mitch mm. McConnell is too through with them too because Mitch McConnell was up there the next day talking after that after Joe Biden said that he's like mm -hmm. yeah Rick Scott's not going to win his primary and um he he was he because you know he's been going on his little tour with Joe Biden the last couple of weeks for the IRA um the groundbreaking stuff so Mitch, Mitch McConnell is pretty unnerved about them too well, um, you know, yeah. not to interrupt, but it, during the thing, they flashed on Mitch McConnell and it face? just looked like he was he there, was but he face. wasn't there. He was like, and I kept thinking, oh boy, they about to, they threw you to the curb, you old dog. But what's well, going to happen is the old dogs are not going to be happy being run by a, a girl who couldn't pass a GED three times or Marjorie Taylor. Um, they, they are not. So <laughs> they believe me. They are but conspiring, it, and they will figure out with though. McCartney. Mitch McConnell was talking about taking Rick Scott and Mike Lee off their um, committee assignments. Yes, behind that stuff, I right. believe they actually did. I believe they well, actually believe did. me, they are going to work it. at how to cinch them up because the oh, party yeah. is not going to get anything at the rate that it's going he, nothing and they know he can't how to be majority majority leader anymore they, and yeah. he's mad at them and he's going to get back I at know. them uh -huh. he is wow they don't call him the grim reaper for nothing <laughs> so on a scale of 0 to 10 how would you rate Mr. Biden's state of the union speech i thought Joe it was Biden, a 10 I thought minute. it was a I thought it was a ten. Yeah, I thought the rebuttal was a zero because it's like, girl, you you had the speech you had the speech in advance. You prepared your remarks in advance, and you still sat there 
and went. Um, it, it was like an abstract painting. There was no, there was no shape, no form. She's too sloppy nothing for me. Right. It was, she looked like. Up. Right. I mean, it, it just looked like she lost 20 pounds just for the photo op. And that was it. I didn't like how she slouches. She doesn't look dignified, but I don't expect anything more from Arkansas. We were lucky to have Bill Clinton when we got him. But even then, I've always thought, and I have a grandfather from Arkansas. So I'm going to tell you right straight up. Ain't nobody trying to move to Arkansas or yeah. any of it or have any of their people control anything about us. It was always a hillbilly redneck, red dirt, rednecks in that town. Always. Okay, let's, let's, be, and, let's be clear. Too. And I know a lot of people are going down right now. A lot of developers that I know have decided and they're actually going to flee. They're going to like psh, psh, they're going to clean it out um, and then it'll be a place to go and invest. But unfortunately, that's what's happening. It's the new Austin that's happening. But uh, time to get in with your little investments and do your stuff. But ain't nobody yeah. trying to look for anything honesty. Them same good old boys and the same people that killed JFK in our country are still have children and offspring through Texas, oh, through Louisiana, through Florida. That same nasty thinking of races, racists, they exist. And look, it's a long time before they're going to be gone. Sadly. I started by saying about Sarah's thing about the Little Rock Nine. In that speech, she also talked about li limited government, which she did not mention when she also invoked them, is that it took the federal government and the 101st Airborne Division of the United, of the United States military to let those, to walk those students in on September 23rd 1957. Okay. So it was big government and the federal government that had to go in because their limited government governor was trying to um, disenfranchise them and go against the, um, the Brown, the Brown decision and Brown too. It took a lot of big government in Arkansas exactly. to keep black people down and to keep them from getting their educations and to keep them from knowing that they weren't enslaved. It took a lot of big government down there to corral people and have um, crooked judge and, and outcomes and different legal things. It took a big government so they can themselves with that. Oh, we want small government. No. It's they don't want small state. government. The, the party that wants to tell you what to do with your body, right. what your kids can and can't do with their body, who you can and can't love, mm -hmm. what school you can and can't go to, um, what you can and cannot not small study government. in school, that's not limited government. That is no. that is governmental overreach. That is, yeah. that is human control. And and truthfully, that's almost legalized slavery. What they're oh, trying it to is. Do. That's what they they're trying to do. And, and look, here's the other thing that I looked at, too. Remember when he said the stuff about the laws that would sunset? Um, the first thing I did when I when Biden said that, I went to go look at our rights, our citizenship rights yeah. and our voting rights. Because I'm like, if right. they're talking about sunsetting those things, um, yeah. how vulnerable is our freedom as black people in this country? Very much. And they want to sunset a lot of it. And it's really, you know, <clears throat> you know, they said that with DeSantis, his thing, you know, where he was trying to have it where all athletes were going to have to report when they got their period, all female athletes, um, he backed away from it. And the reason is these are all testing grounds. They're Their tests parents were upset to see about how it. much, right, and on both sides. So the problem is that it's very important to, uh, I don't know whether we create a shadow Republican Party that and pretend for a long time that we're Republicans in order to throw their polls and throw their whole everything. But we got to do something because we've got to show up at these committees, not completely like Democrats, but maybe as Republicans so that our outrage as X, Y, and Z starts to be a little bit more valid and they take it seriously because yeah. then they think they're going to lose votes. But keep, keep it close to your chest what mm -hmm. you are, Democrat yeah. or Republican. Keep yeah. that tight. We got oh, and we College got Board, I'm looking at you because I'm checking your financials. Mm -hmm. I believe that, right. that that DeSantis thing, that's about money. So Wig Maniac is here saying, sorry, I'm late. Hey, you're mm -hmm. right on time. You're right on time. Black Beauty says, and let's not forget how Mitt Romney came for Scott, telling Scott what an embarrassment Scott is. To your point, how some Republicans come for him. 
Also, Regina, have to. Regina says Romney went after Santos too. And then Black Beauty says, wow, 923 is my daughter's birthday. Same. Also mine. <laughs> uh, yes, Little Rock, nine day. Thanks for Aisha for the knowledge. Tell your daughter she has a wonderful birthday. It's the same as mine. <laughs> Okay. That's really right. the only reason I remembered that back from high school. <laughs> okay, let's move on to our next conversation piece. U.S. shoots down a second high-altitude object days after Chinese spy balloon and another unidentified high-altitude object was spotted flying over Canada today and was shot down, by the way. Mm. What's going on? I saw, the, you know, I saw the press. I saw the presser from, from Canada. Um, earlier, like before the show. Um, and, and I had to ask myself the question, is it that um, these are happening more frequently or is it that because people have the technology to see, like with the, and capture it with their phones and things like that, that it's getting um, more, more widely reported? Because I, I mean, Think about it as as Americans, we would be pretty um, pretty ignorant to think that these things don't happen all the time, and our government doesn't tell us. <coughs> you know, our, these things happen all the time. Our government does not tell us. The fact that people are now seeing these things, right, is I think what is is surprising enough. But but I'm curious about about the um, this this. This most recent one, this one they, they said was like the size of a small car. But the one, well, the one that the American, the one that got over Alaska, it sounded like it was pretty big. Yeah. They said that one was pretty big, but the one today was like a the size of a small car. And when Jill first tweeted that there was another UFO, I'm like, oh my God, are, really? Are people talking about UFOs? <laughs> Well, it's so funny because everybody thinks. No, you know, no, I wasn't thinking those kind of UFOs. The right. I was thinking about the flying saucer. It is kind of. I, I mean, clearly, um, you know, a lot of people are like, "It's aliens, and we shouldn't have shot down the aliens." And it's kind of like, uh, there's always somebody who's so contrary that you. We've worked with them in our offices. We've gone to school with them. There's always that numbskull who just decides to be contrary, right. right? So there was people online like, I don't know if that was like, you know, like, and wait, remember, these we're working with very limited information, making these grand overture statements. Like I would have, I would have never shot them down. But you don't even know what the f is going on. You don't even know what the, what they are dealing with. You think they've told everybody what the they looked at it, they felt like, yo, oh, yo, we got to shoot this down. Like they didn't do it with the balloon. The balloon was fucking like, this was like, oh, no, uh -uh. because here's the thing. If I'm not mistaken, the one we shot down over Canada today was an American U.S. jet that shot it down. Yeah. Um, they it worked, to, worked people, together. Our F-22. So. Yeah. But they were working together. That's what the that's what the um the Girl. person in your State Department um said that that they that Trudeau had had spoke with Biden and they decided on how to handle that. But you know it, it's it's just it, it's just so bizarre to me that American people are sitting here. Well, how come we don't know what's going on and what's that's this? Right. Why it's like wait, <laughs> you're acting like the government is supposed to go. Joe Biden's supposed to get on air and be like, "Girl." Let me tell you right. about this balloon. We've got Here's a national who, Zoom, guys. Who did this? And it's like, no, you, you do right. realize that, that that's about our safety. There are things that we are not supposed to know yeah. as I citizens know. because mm -hmm. guess what? If we get to know them, guess who else gets to know them too? The enemy. American and, and you're people vulnerable are so to attack. in the head. They think this is like a episode from Big Brother. That, that that's what, when you go to the White House, it needs to be that. Like, there are no boundaries in the world of being an American. And as soon as I hear a stupid comment now, you know, I just sit back and go, were they American? Well, you know what, Because you know what I happened like to watch them? a video the other day. I kid you guys not. I think I posted it, which was when it was an old vintage clip showing all these, I can't believe that they're just trying to take over our rights. Can you believe I can't have a beer and drive in my car after work? 
Uh, they just want to tell us when we can drink and can't. <laughs> <clears throat> Wait, and now they also want me to wear a, a seat belt. There were literal people who <laughs> back in the 70s were so freaked out about that. They wanted to be in a so wrong with a man when a man can't come off work and go and have a couple beers and go drive his car. Or remember when That's, teachers used to be able to smoke in the um, teacher's lounge? <coughs> Why come I can't smoke in the school full of kids anymore and they're developing lungs? Yeah. You know, Same it's people. like, this is who our country is. And now it's like, I can't believe that they shot somebody down and then there's people like, saying the aliens that's really terrible for the aliens and i'm like yo we all don't even know what this is first of all i'm just concerned if it was any extraterrestrial why the yeah. haven't they shot anybody up up when they went into their their territory right because our only territory is earth the minute you step outside of this i mean who's owning it if there is somebody out there they have every right to do whatever they want to do because Humans don't own it. I, I, so, mean, this, I don't know. this story is ripe for the people who wear tinfoil hats, okay, in this country. The the people who, the conspiracy theorists, I mean, they're, they're loving this because they can make up stuff and they're going to try and figure out a way to monetize it at yes, some on point. YouTube. Because that, that's also what happens with the tinfoil hat people in America yes. is that they, once they make up this rabbit hole, they then have to profit off of it. Um but like I said, I don't, there are things that we don't need to know. I, I, I'm trusting, and it might be naive on my part, but guess what? I'm trusting that there are enough people in the FBI, mm -hmm. the CIA, and all of our intelligence agencies who know what they're doing and have a whole lot more information than I do and, the, and more knowledge than Bubba in Mississippi knows. Or on you know, Reddit. Has, right. Like, like, like he's going to be able to. Please, you can't even add four plus four. How are you going to solve the problem of the UFOs? I don't get it. So it, I, I just think that we need to our role on that. It's our entitlement here. It's so funny. I sent an email because I drink this special water that's from, um, it's from Romania. And it's an amazing water, right? But I haven't seen it since after the pandemic and a little bit, yeah, right after the pandemic. And then, it, you know, things were slow. And then I wrote off this email like, hey, are you guys ever going to get it back? And then I was sitting there talking to my husband. I said, wow, I'm really stupid. The Carpathian Mountains are like located like through Ukraine, mm -hmm. Romania. I'm like, I have no reason why I can't get my water. But there I was, Miss Dumb American. Uh, do you know where my water and why I can't have water? We have to put ourselves and check ourselves sometimes about what we think we need to know and what we do know and, you know, and, and making up these god awful stories. You know, I'm saying if they shot it down, they it, it's like if I decide to uh, take a spider out of the house or kill it or a fly or a bee or, you know, I try very hard not to. But if it's something I can't, I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to get the fly spray, you know, and I don't like to do that. For me, I've kind of imagined those guys, they take, we don't respect the seriousness of our military's jobs. And we make it as stupid as like a Top Gun movie, or something like, in fact, our minds have been so filtered with pollution, and utter, that we don't take it seriously about the, this is a human well, being. We, we didn't do it with COVID with our doctors and our people, nurses, we're not it seriously. but we're not respectful people. And we mm -hmm. think we know everything under the sun just because it's online. And it's really fair. Hey, and by the way, Twitter is not the world. When you get off of Twitter, it's amazing. Yeah. And, and you, know, you know, the other reason that we struggle too, why people don't really respect and understand what our military does is that we got so many people trying to cosplay soldier when they go mm -hmm. to the state house with their um, AR-15. Girl, you it's know like, it. You know, if you really want, look, if you really, this is what I firmly believe personally. I feel about, I feel this way about people who are in gangs who do shootings. And I feel this way about people who want to carry AR-15s. If you are so big and bad and you want to fire a gun, go overseas, join the military and do it there. Because they need troops. But you can't have anybody that, uh, that impulsive. 
You know, it's so funny. It's like well, it's also cowardice too. It's so funny if you've ever met people who had a certain street power or whatever. Those the ones who were like ready to bounce to bounce off the walls to do something were not the ones also that got done. It was usually the very practical, pragmatic, quiet types that actually could be the most lethal. Yeah. Not somebody gunning, pardon the pun, to, you know, you know, think I'm such a it's terrible. Yeah, it's like, look, that's just as bad as Donald Trump um again cosplaying a superhero by uh superimposing his Steve head on Superman's right. body. Yeah, right. Okay. Like, dude, you're 200 pounds over the limit. Okay. Black Beauty says his breasts are bigger than mine. <laughs> Unfortunately, our ma our country mandated in most states over a decade ago remove civics class from the educational system. Yeah, you this is a result week, of un, this is a result of uneducated citizens. They're just not educated properly. No, they're not. And and if you let Ron DeSantis um, continue to tell College Board what to do for the rest of the country and other places, um, it's going to be that it's going to be that way because. First of all, you have people who don't have a clue about history, education, or anything deciding what kids should and shouldn't learn. It's like a, it's like a, um, it's like a post that I said on Facebook. I mean, on Twitter today, when someone um, was talking about these kids that we're going to talk about later, and said that they're indoctrinated. No, indoctrination is when you only want to learn the history that you like. Right. Not not the whole story. Not everything in context. Not not the nuances of everything. And people can't even American get their vocabularies. Yeah. And, and in America, American right. Education <laughs> is removing the nuance Thank and you. the context, and they're removing the truth. You're going to have people like Sarah Sanders say, Oh, well, the Little Rock Nine couldn't go to school because they were black. Then all of a sudden, one day, the white people stood back and they walked in and went to school and were happy. But if you read the stories or the books by those people, like, um, was it Melba, Matil Mel Melba Patillo Beals will tell you that somebody threw acid in her face right? when she was walking down the hall. But you when, have to when, understand, when, there have been movies, there have been oh. things. Most of these kids don't even read the books, but they are to going to tune into the 1619 Project. Oh, yes, they are. You know? Hulu. And, and on that note, you, know, you guys know I'm not the greatest lover of like hip hop and everything, but I do put the onus and hope that the young people in that direction, because it's not my generation of music. So I'm just going to yeah. say it. It's not that I don't dislike, but my whole thing is if they start showing interest, they, they change the world because all kids of all colors follow them. It's really important to make sure that, you know, you, you sort of have this offering so that, you know, the kids aren't going to get it. Uh, from their books. And also, let's be honest, most kids don't even hard, barely read a book anymore or even listen to an audio thing. The saddest part of all is the is how ignorant the country is becoming, like really yeah. ignorant. And yeah. there's only yeah. going to be a very small handful of educated people. You know, at one point, you know, you go, wow, after the civil rights movement, people were able to go to colleges and things were a little bit more open to people. And uh, not able for it to be utilized. And somebody who I think people should listen to a little bit is Robert Smith, the billionaire, you know, entrepreneur, yeah. black Robert billionaire. F. Robert F. Yeah. Smith, yeah. He's amazing. He said some interesting things about his family giving his him tools, uh, mm -hmm. extending all the way back to his family with in Oklahoma when, you know, they certain family members, I guess, lost their money or whatever but he also took a chance and decided to go into wall street when he had been an engineer most of his life these are really interesting uh people that beyond the rap world and the music world these yeah. are people that you need to take your children to their symposiums or their events or that's this is how we have to do this going forward because yeah. it's it's just too critical yeah. You know, Black Beauty mentioned the removal of civics class in education. You know what else they took out of education, too? Um, the fun? No, cursive writing. Mm -hmm. Kids do not learn how to write cursive. I know. And, and, and part of that is because we're in such a text and typing world. But the other side of it, too, is that I thought about this when I was like, 
they're taking so many things out, but they're not putting anything back. Okay. And, and when I had to learn how to write cursive, first of all, it was a challenge because I was left-handed being taught by right-handed people. And so it, it took a different kind of skill, but also a different kind of attention. When you have, to, when you had to trace all those, remember they had the things where we had to trace this right. and that and learn all the curly cues. And if you didn't right. do it right, teacher, whatever, it teaches you a different kind of discipline. And we have taken all the discipline out of our educational system. Our kids don't know discipline. And with discipline also comes um, patience because you, you had the discipline to wait till you were able to write your name in cursive perfectly. You had the patience to stick with it. Our kids don't have patience either anymore because everything is so automatic. And when you don't have patience, you also, your expectations are different. And when your expectations are different, um, you're going to, we, and because your expectations are different, we end up with the world that we have now. But this is so, what's so interesting. Our country might just be the only country that haggles over these laws that were already in effect. And everybody else looks like they're trying to add to things, you right. know, like, as opposed to America, always trying to take things away from their kids. It's exactly. like you go to France and you're like looking at things and they're trying to figure out how to add a different curriculum. And other countries are trying to say, we'll have more Mandarin classes. We'll have more Cantonese. They're adding. But in America, the fact that they think taking away something is, is beneficial better. is actually crazy because for me, I like, that's like sitting at a plate. It's imagine you are sitting at dinner and somebody comes, ah, sorry, I'm going to just take away your silverware right now. And then you're like sitting there and then, ah, I'm sorry, I'm going to take away your, your potatoes. Yeah. That's what it is in America. It's like you start out with something very little to be exact, but, and then you end mm -hmm. up with, you're, you're in the hole trying to get a spoon or a spork. And then, you know? and then look, and then people, you want to know how people end up and voting they got for you someone like for, for the, they're taken away. Right. Yeah. And you want to <laughs> end up voting for someone like Donald Trump if you keep them stupid? Yes. They if you will keep come. Keep them stupid. <laughs> they will come. What was it Lyndon B Lyndon B Johnson said, um if you convince the poorest white man that the black mm -hmm. man is his problem, you can pick his pocket for for a week a million exactly times and they is. still haven't gotten any smarter about that. No. They still mm -hmm. don't believe it. They don't. It's so funny. I, I, I mean, we can repeat this to them like over and over, and they still are just the type of people that are like, because can I just get a leg up on you? Don't the, they don't have the critical thinking skills because they're, into, they're not in the yeah. education so, too. So, Black Beauty says, Aisha, thank you. Also, Jen is saying, <clears throat> Aisha, exactly. Cursive is a necessary discipline that has been taken away from today's children. So sad. I loved writing in school. Black Beauty says, you're absolutely correct, Aisha. Thank you for bringing up these key points. Your educational appetite of expression is fantastic. Thank you. Oh, thank you. All right. So let's move on to our next conversation piece that we have here. And we're just flowing as usual here. The earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. We talked a little bit about them in the introduction, but th this is a seriously bad situation. This is like the tsunami back um what, 20, almost 20 years ago, right? Yeah. It, it just, they were already devastated countries, right? And just to see those people just not only lose everything, but lose so many people. The last count I saw was 20,000. I'm sure it's much higher than that now. I'm sure so of it. You're looking at Turkey, which is, and Syria. You're looking at that whole region as part of the Ottoman Empire. Um, it So the buildings in themselves are, old but what's so interesting is it wasn't necessarily the oldest of the oldest buildings that collapsed it was like some of their newer um and, and who's to say but but i'm sure after they get through all of this they will figure out because we know japan goes through a lot of heavy serious earthquakes um mm -hmm. it's a question here even in california like how up to date is everybody on their earthquake skills the earthquake prep the uh construction 
because I'm of the of the belief that the last 10 years is there's been so much corruption globally that I don't think that cities and places have been taking care of business at all. And mm -hmm. there is uh, we, you know, the devastation there, they're on a 128 hours, a new baby was just pulled out after being, but to what fate, you know, uh, yeah. a lot of animals and different charities. I have a friend, remember I've spoken about him before, John Rose, Waves for Water. They go and put wells and things in all these different countries. I've been watching his post on Instagram to see if they're going to go out. There's a lot of um, our military guys, retired American military and other military from abroad. They come together and uh, have rescue missions and, and build these extra parts of the infrastructure. So I imagine, um, but try to give to reputable places, not always just the Red Cross. There's a few that even he put up uh, mm -hmm. that I had on one of my pages to donate to. And don't be scared by the Arabic writing. Um, right. But there is just to make sure they can get, you know, some kind of uh, immediate access and be taken care of. But you raise a good point about the structure and the safety um, of, of basically anywhere, because with with climate change, it's going to these things are going to happen more frequently. You guys New, had an New York, had, New York had an earthquake like four two point, weeks ago. Yes, four point yeah, five. Which yeah, four Buffalo, point imagine, look, the state, the, yeah, it was. Buffalo, could you imagine right? if that happened yeah. at that to that scale it's in New York City? At all. Remember, New York yeah. City not only operates above ground, but a lot of it operates significantly totally. under like the whole right. subway and tunnel system, right? And the buildings are not built to roll, mm -mm. you know. No, nope. and, um, and the buildings are built straight up sky high. Remember what 9-11 looked like when those buildings, those towers came down. Yes. Imagine that. That's what Turkey over looked the like. entire city. That is what that's Turkey what looked Turkey like. looked like. And I'm sure everybody now did somebody go and Turkey plant bombs like inside Aztec everybody's ruins. home? Because that's it's the way that people build homes is how they come down. They typically if you've done construction, it's not like a house just tips all the way over. That's really not even on any great, you know, bad building site. But um, you have that. And you also, uh, there was an earthquake in Texas and going up, there's a fault line going all the way right in the middle of America through Oklahoma yeah. and, you know, steadily. So there was one there too. So we have some craziness happening. and. Um, I and I just don't to... believe that the governments have been, they've been taking a lot of money from the pandemic, but I know in my heart, they haven't put it back into their people. Yeah. But imagine Man, there must be a car chase going on here, I guys. Mean, you know, we're also a crazy city that likes to watch car chases like, like you, you know, freaking. No, it's horrible because it makes, it actually becomes more dangerous. Yeah. And, you know, somebody drove through somebody's house the other night at two in the morning. Because they were too many, all the police start to, there's helicopters, how much drones? It's like, just back the up for a minute. You just mentioned that fault line. I'm like wondering, why couldn't it be horizontal and like just cover the south? <laughs> I know. And like one day and just like break off and just- I'll Say, have at it, into the, into the water. Because honestly, that's what they want anyway. If, if I could figure out a way to cut Florida <laughs> all the way up through Texas, off the country and just let them free float in the um in the uh ocean i'd let them yeah <laughs> it's it's pretty bad you know but no but the, unfortunately the, the, when you said that fault line I'm like oh my god imagine that i'd be stuck with them <laughs> yeah but it's pretty serious and i know some parts of syria are war zones so who knows what access they're going to get to any help it's going to be an entire generation for them to even get to a point where they have finally completely cleaned up. Yeah, that's and, and yeah. Rebuilt. An entire generation is a 25 year period. Think think about that, because you think about how long it took for them to rebuild um, the site where the towers were here. Because mm -hmm. we had the infrastructure, the money, and also to because there was that determination to to do this afterwards. But think about that devastation over there. You're talking about more than twenty thousand people dead. You're talking about miles and mi hundreds of miles of land um, and, and destruction. 
where are they supposed to put all that rubble and stuff? They've got to figure out places to do that. And this is after they're not going to be able to recover. Well, we have a really they've lost, which is a very sad thing. There's a really significant like situation where you know the road from Syria. I think part just out from Syria, there's a connecting road and Turkey that's just been demolished, just told us. So that's yeah. really difficult to get any help to them. And their crazy leader doesn't really want anyone's help. So I don't know. Uh, what's his name? Abadu, Yabadabadu. What is his name? <laughs> <laughs> He's about as much of a bonehead as anybody on the Flintstones could ever be. But um, <laughs> what is his name? You know, and his, and his, his dumb, but pr his pretty, but wife, heartless, <laughs> cold peace. You know, oh. this is going to be something that's going to take them a long time to recover from. And they're going to need help from the entire the entire world, really, to help start to put things together. Not I mean, not even to put things right or to put them back, to put things together, to get people basic needs like water and food and shelter and, um, you know, warm clothing because remember it's also freezing over there that's yeah, the other it's concern cold, it's that they cold, have yeah. is the, are the temperatures particularly at night yes yes that is yeah. a good point and, that, and that's affecting the rescue yeah that yeah it, like i've seen pictures and uh, i've listened to some reports and it's it's really bad it's but like, i will I mean, say that it is not only one of the scariest things happening you know there's a lot of things going on let's not forget what's happening in ohio as well with the derailment of the train where all those animals yes. it's like their own chernobyl mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. chernobyl and they are not talking about it here i get it we have a lot that we have to focus on but so many animals and people were evacuated and have like toxic that that land there because of the vinyl and with the treatment of what they did uh, to not have an explosion actually is irreparable probably for years to come. Right. And the Exxon Valdez oil, oil. Yes. Um, they're still secret. Look, they're still cleaning up <laughs> that yeah. mess. When was that yes. with the late eighties, early nineties? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's move on. Next conversation topic, students stage a walkout in Alabama after they were told to censor their Black History Month program, not to include anything before 1970. Aisha? You see my face, right? <laughs> you are Alabama, okay? You have a city that was known as Bombingham because of the amount of bombs that went off nightly. 1963, bombing of 16th Street Baptist Church killed four girls. The fifth girl survived who I do happen to communicate with and she still suffers physically and emotionally from that day in 1963 and it is 2023. Um, the bus boycotts were there. Um, you know, University of Alabama, the, the desegregation of all that, James Meredith, all of, all of that kind of stuff. And, and, and you don't want people to know, black, particularly black students and the white students too, to know the history before 1970. Why? Because if you're ashamed of your history, they're ashamed of their history. They don't want their kids to have to go and say, hey, mom, grandpa, uh, how'd you feel about this? What were you doing this? Oh, why am I seeing you in my textbook? Okay. And this was just a Black history program. Okay. Black history month program that the students were doing. So they were told to censor that for that reason. If they're going to tell students to do that for a presentation, a program. Imagine what they're thinking about doing in their Department of Education when it comes to the, the study of it. And anything before 1970, I mean, um, <laughs> then, then, then can we talk about what happened after 1970? You all still weren't fully integrated, your public schools, until what, was it 76, I think it was? So, I mean, how, how, how much of your history do you want to um, not talk about. But let's also remember that if, if you're going to censor history like that, um, Black history, then let's censor American history, which means anything before 1970, you can't talk about your Confederate soldiers, take down your Confederate flags, 
that's before 1970. Mm-hmm. They don't anything before 1970 also means that you don't get to talk about Martin Luther King. Right. Point. I mean, I, I mean, I don't understand. I do understand where this is coming from. What I don't understand is why in 2023 kids are having to walk out and stage marches and protests like it's 1963 period oh, yeah. I, I don't under, I don't understand that it, it's like you can't proclaim Alabama that you're the new south when you're treating your kids like it's the old south it's a good point you got to make a choice either you're going to be the new south or the old south cuz to me the new south looks a whole lot like the old south mhm good point Jill anything you want to add on that I mean, I think that one day people will look back at this time and if there's anything, I don't know. I think that, I think the next phase where, uh, where everything's going is, is leaps and bounds because I think they'll be able to do anything they want with stupid generation of people. I think they will be able to really accomplish uh, a, a, a future that is completely driven by artificial intelligence and uh, a grab bag of all sorts of psych- psychological things that will be targeting people. We needed to be in the phase of regulating certain laws with algorithms and things like that about how we're going to proceed forward with, you know, UBIs and universal basic incomes and, and jobs and getting people the correct training for the future and, you know, um, really like that and, and how we're going to have food growth or prevent um, illnesses. We should have been there. So what always amazes me with these Christian freaks who pretty much want to call this country this, that, it'll never be Christian. It lacks heart. It lacks a soul for Jesus. It lacks something. It also, they people want to talk about a utopia. Because isn't that what heaven is supposed to be? But gee, they can't even try to help make it happen on earth. You see, that's the beauty of being human. Why wouldn't you want to? Everybody's got to die to think that there's something when you really can't tell anybody what's there. The reality is why wouldn't we strive with all of these wonderful advancements that we have and what I thought we had educated people with uh, who w- were coming out of the racism. But when you have ignorant people on your team, they will drag you all the way down to the bottom. And that's a problem. Yeah. When you have greed, when you have people that don't want any kind of equanimity, nothing like that. You know, when you have someone like a Jeff Bezos or, or really elite rich people, like how much more money do you need? Like, honest to God, what do you need it for? To watch? Because it just comes to a point of like, oh, and to do that whole phil- philanthropy thing, I'm going to give it away, but I want you all to tell me how great I am, but I don't really want to tell you that I gave away, oh, I lived my whole life with 50 billion and I gave it all away. <laughs> oh, aren't I such a good human being? I mean, Alabama wants to live I can't like- even get away this money. I can't give it away. I mean, please tell me how wonderful I am. Alabama wants to live I'm like... I'm Prince. Shut your mouth about your philanthropy. I don't really <laughs> need to know. Look, Alabama wants to live like it was just founded in 1970. And then you have Mississippi over here having a two... Having two separate justice systems. One for black people and one for white people. I don't know if you've yep. read about that. But their state legislature just decided that there's going to be a separate justice system for black people. The white legislature decided this, okay, right. in a time when black people are being killed by law enforcement mm-hmm. recklessly. So they're going to have a sep- um Let's remember Mississippi is where the three civil rights workers were killed, where Emmett Till was killed, where Megger Evers was killed, the Freedom Summer, um, Freedom Rides. Yeah, that Mississippi wants to go back to um the old Mississippi. So what I said before stands, the new South looks a whole lot like the old South. It's like, it's like Republicans have found a way 
to go back in time by just, let's just change all the laws. We'll change the laws on the things that we don't like. And then, then we'll be back where we were. Question here for you, Aisha. Uh -huh. Black Beauty is asking, Aisha, please explain if you can, what potential legal action can be taken to prevent further censorship of Black history education? None. Well, here's the here's the problem with it. In when you have a state, depend it depends on your state charter, depends on your state constitution and how your state has education mandated in its constitution. For many states, the governor gets to have the ultimate say. So that's why in Florida, Ron DeSantis is able to do what he's able to do with regard to education. That's why Sarah Huckabee Sanders is able to do what she's able to do. Why Youngkin is able to do what he's able to do. So what people can do is when these particular things, um, censorship and um, segregation, you gotta treat censorship almost like it's segregation. You have to look for opportunities where your your censorship leads to segregation. You can sue a school district for that because guess what? We have a law on the books for that. We do have a law, we do have freedom of speech and we do have censorship laws. However, there are those caveats when it comes to things like education. It comes to things that re with regard to children and things like that. Um I real what I really think needs to happen is that we're at a point right now where we don't have federal oversight over educational systems in this country. And that's a problem. The only time our federal government has ever gotten involved in our educational systems was when there was a violation of federal civil rights. So for example, um, school segregation, that was a violation of, of um, our, federal, our federal rights. Separate but equal was not separate but equal. Um, that, that they based that on the Dred Scott decision and, and everything else before that. Um, this is one of those really touchy subjects when it's going to take for people to uh, bring this up starting at their local level, at your school board. Because remember, Republicans were very smart. They didn't start at the top with the presidency. They started at school boards. They ran for all the school board seats and they fixed that. Then they ran for the city council seats. Then they ran for the state legislature seats, then the governor's offices, and eventually the presidency with Donald Trump. So the best way to combat it, black folks, brown folks, liberal folks, run for those school board seats. I have an aunt, my aunt sits on, school, on a school board right now. And they get to decide, not just help decide the curriculum of a particular district, but they also decide on the budget, what money goes where, who gets hired in terms of a superintendent and, and all of those things. And, and that's why I think we as black people do ourselves a disservice when we only focus on the national races and don't really get into the weeds of our local races. But because, we keep telling them over and over and nothing yeah. changes. Sorry, after a while, there's nothing you can do. The fact is they continue to expand on the boards of these school boards. And frankly, I think it's too late for people and their little kids because we already see what they're doing with the others, with this charter schools. Well, let we me tell you see what else. the goal is. Let me tell you something else about these school boards. Because here's, wait, here's, here's the let other me just say, let me just say something. I feel like the way that the GOP applies their application of the laws is winning. Democrats are not in there enough to challenge it or the people that are running don't understand it or know how to master that. But they have put in a lot of people who are able to make a new application of laws, local laws. And but one of the reasons for that is that Democrats aspire, I'm not, I'm not saying to have high aspirations. The and they've got the police involvement as well. But Democrats often aspire to the higher offices <laughs> rather than the, the smaller ones, mm -hmm. which is where those 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 rules and those laws get made. Um, and, and I'll tell you something. If you look at any school board, 
first thing you got to ask is how many of these people on this school board actually have kids that are in school? You'd be surprised. There was one school board. I was, I can't remember what state I want to say it was like Montana or something. And everyone, everyone on that school board was over 70. You know, they didn't, they haven't been in school in what, but Half nobody wants the jobs, Aisha. Yeah, this is the problem in America, period. When I said my brother drove from Florida through up to Pennsylvania, he marked how many em no longer cities, towns, they don't exist. And I was watching a documentary about Newfoundland today, an island, a different place where their biggest fear right now is, wow, this one family, six generations, have been fishmongers. Well, guess what? The kids that they educated so well don't want to do it and have left. In fact, they have less people living there today than they ever did. So don't think that these new kind of conversations like with the with the World Economic Forum and all of these things that have been going on, they've talked about it. People leaving and leaving areas like, and it's happening even here in our small towns. They're not running for the offices because they want to either make more money, they're not married. There's a whole, the sociology of what's happened to just the breakdown in the black community of family is one of the main reasons that's so genius uh, how they pulled I, it apart. I, 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 well, we also have a problem too in that these lower seats like this, oftentimes, like I look at my, for example, I take my own state and I look at our, and I look at like some of our, our races like city council, our at-large seats in different cities and, and our school boards. A lot of those Republicans run uncontested. That's a problem. That That is a problem. And, and that's not a black problem. That's a Democrat problem. Because at this point, you're just giving the seats away. And that is something that you'll find as a trend all across the country. Democrats right. are giving these seats away. G gotta move on because we got comments and follow up on this. <laughs> so Black Beauty is asking, is refusal to educate the masses about Black American history already a violation of federal laws discrimination? No, because we don't have um, we don't we do not have a constitutional right to education. I happened right. to learn that a couple years ago. Exactly. There's no there we have a, we have a constitutional right to the facility, the public space, but not to an education that is not written in our our United States Constitution, and in most states, it's not written in the state constitution either. Okay, next, Black Beauty again says, Aisha, where, when you guys, both you were just discussing that, where are all the Black people? All of this regarding the issues regarding educational censorship in the South. I mean, is this the new future? Black folks just accept this? No well, representation. Well, no, there's the gerrymandering. The other part just, too is the gerrymandering. Where of these are districts. the white people in most of these districts? I mm -hmm. mean, where are the good white people? That is, we're yeah. only still, what, 14% of the population? Yeah. I mean, the reality is no matter how much gerrymandering they do, they're still outweighing us. You need very strong voices. You need also allies in this field. We're only seeing white people who are the worst ones to show up and not enough good white ones. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. And, and that, and that is, I think when we have these conversations about race, you know, black people all the time, we have these conversations internally amongst ourselves mm -hmm. all the time. White people, you all need to start having these conversations internally all the time and holding one another accountable because the, the bottom line, I know they don't get, you don't care. They really don't. But don't call yourself Not enough ally. of them care. Not enough yeah. of them care. Not enough of them care. But if, Because they, it's like they've been called for duty, you yeah. know, to, for, this is like, this may not be a war, but there's a war here in the country. And the war is, we are calling you up unless we almost have to draft you to pay the attention. You know, uh, that's what this is. This is a, a a cultural draft about how do you want your country to become? Because there's only so much that people of color can do, but white people really need to step up to and become allies. And we don't just need to see the Karens and the Kens showing up like they have been. Yeah, and here's the thing. Black people aren't gonna be able to solve racism. You know why? Because we don't have a problem with us being black. We don't also, have a problem. We don't have a problem with that. Also, race. there's a numbers game in America. There's a, there's there's a numbers first. game, but but that's here, what but I said. Line, but the bottom line is, the people that can fix it are the people who have the problem. Because guess what? That's why. Remember, back in the day, they used to call it. They used to call us what? The Negro problem. We weren't our problem. They can. They considered us their problem. And if you have the problem, you fix your problem. You have to come up with a solution for your problem. 
we don't have the problem. So we can't, we can't fix you. We can't fix it because we don't have a problem with it. We're okay in our skin. You're not okay with us in our skin. All right. I don't know if that's true anymore. Black, I'm just not black, sure. Black Beauty saying, I'm beginning to believe that there's not enough black people care anymore. Yes, as a black woman, this is terrible, but geez, where are our people? I'm sorry, but I... You know so, what? Because the GOP have... is an abusive party. If you keep abusing somebody, they suddenly fall in line and go with submission. You know, not What's only happened? that, I, I have to say, I, I kind of... Or I they go, it's not that bad. I kind of agree with you on one hand, Black Beauty, because I, I sit and I look, when I look at Black people generationally, like, for example, in my family, we have from the greatest generation, my grand, I mean, the yeah, yeah, my grandparents to Gen Z. Okay, so in between there, there's baby boomers, there's Gen X, and there's a millennial. And so one of the things that I've noticed is that later Gen X and millennials, there, there was this period where you talk about not enough black people care anymore. I think you're seeing younger people start to care, younger, and I'm talking Gen Z. I think those that other generation between when you get to my end of Gen X and older, there's in through the millennials, there's that apathy there that um, I don't think by the time they realize uh, that this is their problem too, um, they'll be too old to fight it. Okay, let's move. I don't let's think Gen on. Z is going to do. Well, Gen Z is the one host. They're the ones holding these marches, you know, March for Our Lives. They're the ones. They're the ones that were on the front lines of the. Um, the it's George not Floyd enough. Protests. It's not enough of them. You know, they're all concerned about what dress they're going to wear or who, what their pronouns should be. Stupid. That has that true. is, huh? That's that's not necessarily true. It, the the I'll say this: the Gen Z that are on Twitter, yeah, yeah, okay. the ones that aren't on the ones that aren't on Twitter. All I know is that the results of this election were really awful, and we shouldn't have lost the house. And sorry, but, but what Gen about Z Pennsylvania? All the way. But did you all hear about Pennsylvania and their special Pennsylvania. elections? No, Pennsylvania Democrats got control of the state house this week in their special elections mm. all right so that's something to watch last comment on this the, from this subject we're still the negro problem translated only we can completely fix it no excuses just do it all right last conversation piece i had not heard about this lady till this afternoon so you ladies got to tell me about this lady anna paulina luna she's the female george santos yeah, her <laughs> name's not even Anna Luna. Her real name is like Anna Meyerhofer or something. Meyerhofer, like that. yeah. Yeah, and her father's German, and they believe that her grandfather was a Nazi soldier in World War II. Yeah. Um, she was. Um, on one hand, she said she was very poor and this and that, and it was just her and her mother. And they didn't have any support systems. The rest of her family is like poor. What do you mean? We supported her. She. They brought. They broke out pictures. The cousin broke out pictures of, she's like, yeah, they didn't, her mother was saying, no, she didn't spend much time with them. The cousin had like five pictures of them across their lifetime from the time they were little kids to the time that what was the last one taken in like 2015 or something. Right. And she went um, to UCLA. Yep. And which she is was, not a cheap school. Put, put it this way. She was Carrie Lake. If Carrie Lake were a half Latina German. Right. Because she used to like Obama too. Right. So why? And, and I think she's just. I think she's like Candace Owens. I and Roger like, Stone came out and said she was a stripper. Yep. I think she's like <laughs> Candace Owens and all these other. So, people but it, who go I found it odd that money. Roger Stone came and threw her under the bus. Mm -hmm. So, which shows me there's a little wrinkle in that situation because remember, these are people who have aligned themselves with they want to with the whole Trump thing, but there's Matt Gates. So there's trouble in paradise for yeah. what happened because when that whole Kevin McCarthy thing was going down where no one was going to vote for him, she wouldn't vote. She wouldn't him. vote. So she put herself as a target, but somewhere somebody's not pleased with her because Roger Stone said she's a stripper and, uh, and there's, and he's got the receipts to show that. Yeah. I think they regard her as a rhino. Charlie, Charlie oh. Kirk girl. Mm-hmm. 
turn. Yeah, but I think they regard her as a rhino, Republican in name only. And it was just to win this election. Again, right. she's a grifter like um, George Santos. This is all about the money. Put, put it this way. There are a lot of people of color, Black and Latino especially, yeah. and, and there are and Asians too, who know where the money is. And the money mm -hmm. is not with the Democratic Party, mm -hmm. unless you get to be a Kirsten Cinema or Joe Manchin. These people like George Santos and Anna, Anna Luna Meyerhofer, whatever her name is, um, <laughs> they know that, look, if I decide to run as a Republican, even though I feel this way, um, that's where the money comes, the super PACs, all the money, all the lobbies, all, you know, get to throw money at you, money at you, money at you. And you just get this nice cushy job. And all you have to do is just bobble, bobblehead. Yeah. That's it. And, and guess what? I mean, and she's from LA and they moved her to Florida, to Florida right? not where they yeah. work this whole yeah. thing. And, and, and that, there's the something family. very fishy about that too, because mm -hmm. Is it Florida that you don't have to be a resident until like Florida, Florida and Georgia, you don't have to be something. a resident until like the near the very end of your election yeah. or whatever. It's a really so, weird one. Yeah. You got to be watch these Republicans. OK, because they are recruiting people from God knows where and just planting them. Where everything is they involved win. in all of that mm -hmm. and putting the money through. That's Candace Owens thing. But yep. I don't Tur know. Yep. Turning point. Yeah, now, like I said, I had not heard of this person's name till you brought up this afternoon on our on our Twitter chat. Is that I had, who who is this? Look, the only reason she was able was to kind of stay underneath the radar. Was, yeah, but the only reason she was able to kind of stay under the radar was because what George Santos was doing was so blatant and so loud and boisterous and in your face and and just he was so indignant about it. That she kind of was able, like, kind of like, oh my God, I hope they don't look at me. My God. And and now that that now that they're kind of dealing with him, and he and, you know, it's like, oh, now we have to start put it this way. You've got some, you've got some uh like she old said Republican. she was an Ashkenazi Jew. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's the only thing. She gets voted, right? right? And come find out her come find out she's got Nazi roots. Right? Yeah. You know, was, <laughs> was a guard, was in the army, which I mean, wow. to be fair, every he was in it, and uh, you know, clearly uh, was exonerated because he came through Canada, through ways down through here. Yeah. So but she also said her father was in jail, and her mother said her father wasn't. was in jail, and there's and no. Her mother record. is shady too. Yeah. There's there's Wait, no how, record. So what is her mother her, went how, to law school and then became an she, elementary school teacher. How did she come sense. to attention? Why is the attention on this lady all of a sudden? Because I would have always had attention on her. I knew from the time there was something about her. You know, because she's attract. She was almost too attractive. Yeah. And when the whole McCarthy hearings things was going on, oh. she really became a pivotal person. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's what was my red she flag. She shone a light on herself. She put the light. She put it this way. She put the spotlight on herself when she became that one of one of twenty who mm -hmm. would not vote for him. Okay. And then eventually changed her vote. And, okay. But here's the other thing, too. When reporters started digging and got to the George Santos thing, she should have known her days were numbered because once they find one, they're going to keep digging for the other because guess what? News media, different sites are trying to scoop each other. So, ooh, she's a tourist. Right. Let money. me see if I can she's, find somebody else. She's like T Tulsi Gabbard. These women were recruited <laughs> while they were in the army because she was in the army. She also ended up going to University of West Florida. But something is going on in our army with these women. And I don't know what it is, but they might want to start recruiting because I believe that and look, uh, not recruiting, they need to start investigating where this changeover that they'll just be anybody because they're specifically mm -hmm. looking for bimbo types, like pretty kind of attractive and like, oh, let's go for the Kard Kardashian look this year, you yeah. know, whatever it's going to be. Uh, blonde kind of took a back seat for a little bit with the Republicans because they're going for that target audience. You can see it by the way these women are. Yeah. So it's very, very interesting. She was married to a man called Andrew Gimberski. I don't know what happened to him. Um, has anybody seen him? Because mm -mm. um, she's changed her name a few times. She uh, said a lot about her father who died actually in a car accident last year, yeah. so a couple years ago. So there's something fishy. She came out saying that she was going to be exonerated and make everybody look like a fool. And it's just like, hey, still waiting.
right? Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I won't tolerate this, and this is my staffer, and I'm biracial, and all this other stuff she's going on about. You know, all of a sudden now she's biracial, um, which has nothing to do with you being a really person or not. It doesn't matter. Like, I don't care what you are. Yeah. You're just a grifter. And uh, I think if they keep digging, they're going to find gold. Oh, yeah. I think I mean, this is only the just the touch of it. But, she better but, watch out because they're going to be digging. They are. And on a different note, Dens, we we dodged, we dodged the bullet with Tulsi Gabbard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because oh that God. woman is a nut. All right. So was her father, though. He changed in Hawaii. Her father, Tulsi Gabbard, she learned from her dad because he was a Democrat. Then he changed to a Republican. And that's just that's just who they are. You the know? Pepe Le Pew look is still not working for her. I'm sorry. I know. Thank you. <laughs> I so know. a few, a few mm -hmm. last comments here from Black yeah. Beauty. Uh, saying, yeah. yeah, we're oh, not that we already saw that one. Let's do here. Mm -hmm. She said she's a U.S. Air Force veteran, but what's not clear is what she stands for concerning very. And also, this is the problem with American politics. Americans are just accepting of anything. It's a lot to keep up with. Again, this say. goes back to people being stupid. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> you know, I, I, I know in my heart and in my head, I do not want literacy tests and things like that because they they were they were historically used against us black people to keep us from voting however there's a part of me that kind of is like my god can we just have them for republicans because these people do not it's like read a book i'm sorry i, I just can't okay I, But I know in my heart that everyone has the right and everyone should have the right and everyone should. I just wish people would be more informed when they well, go the last, The last word here on Anna Polina, she was in the U.S. Air Force. Unfortunately, she's no airhead per her Air Force training, et cetera. The problem is she's controversial because she gets away with it. Yeah. Okay. All right. The problem it's, is that these people exploit other things other vulnerable, serious topics in our government, things yeah. that could bring people together, and they just create more things to become more divisive and to, you know, get you off the scent of them. You know, it's like so funky right now. Everybody needs to be like, well, what the f did you do? But now today she's dealing with some biracial stuff, and mm -hmm. and it's and she threw that out there and as a distraction, but. And it's really sad. They all do it. They all do it to just take away. Diversion. You know, diversion. Just, you know, I'm, diversion. Uh, people just vet your candidates. Read read as much as you possibly can. Learn as much as you possibly can. And 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 if the person is not doing what they're supposed to be doing, do not be afraid to vote them out. Okay. It, it's that it's that simple. I mean, you know. Use use the vote, but also use your vote wisely. Make sure make sure the person is going to do more than just hate the people that you hate. All right. Cinema Canella goes, white people have, quote, the Negro problem and the immigration problem and money problem. It's a never sending circle. All right. Yeah. Um, that yeah. is it for another. Oh. That is it for another episode of Stay. I, when, when we started, I thought we don't have enough to chat about. A lot of mercy, especially that, that first topic. Wow. <laughs> wow. That was fire. That was fire. I, I, like, I think, I think we have to have at the end of this year, we have to have our top 10 lists. <laughs> mm. We need to have a, a, even though we're in February, maybe maybe we have to do it quarterly. Who's our, our top 10, our monthly top Right, 10 exactly. List? Our top so 10 true. List. Like, because it seems that there's certain people, would I say trigger this conversation? Marjorie Taylor Greene. Merit. Uh, Merit. Mm -hmm. the, the, those mm -hmm. seem to be the two hot hot spots right now. oh and don't get me right. started on um nimrata oh, god <laughs> <laughs> like i like to call her nimwit 
<laughs> I feel like, you know, when, when we start talking about her and others, it's like we're resurrecting some old Marvel car comic <laughs> book character that people like go, who was that Batman. always the one who sold flowers in the middle of them? Like, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> no, they all remind me of the old Batman show and like the different cast of characters. Like the oh, Riddler, yes. The Joker. I mean, the Riddler, that, the that's Joker, they all are. <laughs> Mr. True. Freeze. But nobody's been like as as Julie Newmar, Catwoman. That's the Catwoman. <laughs> well, hey, hold on. What about Eartha Kid too, though? Yeah, she was good. But if you look at Julie Newmar's body, that was ridiculous. The <laughs> waist was this small. I, and and here's the thing: no surgery. These women were not like. Maybe she had her boobs done, but to be honest with you, I look at women from back in the day. Have you guys noticed like on Instagram lately, people have like put a filter on Marilyn Monroe and like Liz Taylor and Dorothy Dandridge. I'm like, you are never happy. Why? Like, Why? I, I don't know, because but because know they're not used to seeing like people and, don't yeah, know it makes them feel like better to think that somebody isn't a natural beauty. It's a yeah. real messed up time. That well, we're think in. about it. A lot of women, I just told my daughter this the other day, I said, why do all women of a certain age look like they all have lips that look like they've been full of fillers they all oh, wear their eye makeup the same boy. way they're everything yeah. the same color it's like no, let's, let's not even start i don't want to start going there that's that's a whole i don't want to start that i don't want to start that so jen says love the conversation regina says <laughs> we are resurrecting zippy the pinhead exactly <laughs> right <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah. She, goes, are, are, she goes. Are we having fun yet? You could also talk about Madonna. No, thank no. you. Ooh. No, no. That's another episode. We're at the end. That's very mean of you, Regina. I'm joking. That's to resurrect Madonna at the end of the conversation. That'll be next week. Thank you. I just want to know who's the inventor of the fillers that wants everybody to look like. I don't know. <laughs> frightening like, every, like you their know faces, like their face is swollen i tried it and i told you guys like you can i can look at the picture and see you know exactly when i did it and there's something that happens in here and it's weird the only thing i've had is botox and i've had that for migraines and it just got rid of some of the little lines of, across here but yeah. even still it's not an it's not significant enough to the point that it's like oh you have botox like, I'll be no. honest with you. I feel better when I hardly put even a cream on my face anymore. I actually think that my skin looks better when I don't do anything but soap and water and go on about maybe a little bit of moisturizer and that's it. But I, I'm a hundred percent. I don't think, I think we're all just doing a little too much. A lot look, of I only people. Put, look, I only put makeup on to do the show today. <laughs> I know me too. Well, quick, quick little final story. Um, Many, many years, I was actually having a conversation with a friend who we used to go to concerts back in the day. And one of the people who I will never forget her true beauty, and she's still alive today, is a lady named Shantae Moore. Mm. Oh, yeah, you told woman. us about yeah. the time you met her. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. for people, and I, I remember meeting her, and I was, I, was out, I was out of it. I just went, wow. Yeah. I said, wow. And I told her verbatim, I said, Shantae Moore. You may look good in the videos, but you are a hundred times better looking in person. Right. She's a good looking like, woman. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and still a very attractive woman. Still a very attractive yep. woman. So on that point, we'll finish. So somebody family. told me I needed fillers. Like I went to a dermatologist. She's like, you might need some fillers like right in here. I'm like, I don't see what you're seeing. What do right. I I don't I don't need this? <laughs> Regina is laughing and smiling. Thank you, Regina. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. So, as always, before we let the ladies go, we would like them to share their contact information. So, first up, and she's back. You know, she's not 100% healthy, but she made it I through. Know. I know. I'm a little tired now. I need to go to sleep. All right. But where can people get in touch with you, young lady? At Jill D. Jones, Twitter, and Jill Jones Music on Instagram fantastic and then there we go aisha there you go. aisha staggers twitter ak staggers instagram excellent myself you can get a hold of me website the drvibeshow.com email dr period 
V-I-B-E at the D-R-V-I-B-E-S-H-O-W.com. YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn, The Dr. Vibe Show. Twitter at D-R-V-I-B-E-S-H-O-W. And Instagram, the, at The Dr. Vibe Show. A few last things as we close out here. Again, if you're watching this on or before February 20, February 20, February 16th, 2023, if you want to learn more about podcasting, I'm hosting my last session of a three-part webinar on how to podcast. And it's a how hour and a half. You can ask me anything. And even if you register and you can't come, you will, I believe you'll get access to all three of the webinars. So even if you can't make it, register and I think you can get access to all three of them. Next up, as always, please subscribe to the Dr. Vibe show on YouTube. And if you do it on YouTube, not only subscribe, but also hit the notification button. And also to subscribe to the YouTube channel because we are now employing YouTube shorts. So you're getting small little clips of Aisha, Jill, and Lala in action. And thank you for everyone who is watching. They're getting fantastic response. So thank you for supporting the YouTube shorts. And then finally, if you would like to promote your business or service on the show, contact me at dr. Period, v i b e at the dr. v i b e s h o w dot com. As we close, because this is a long one today, but it was a good one. Live your life as a dream. If you can dream it, you can make it. Sometimes you have to get small to get stronger. Block assumptions and aim bigger, aim better, aim higher, aim wider. Love, faith, and respect. Remember to give yourselves grace, and don't just manage your time manage your energy. We will see you next week on State of Things and thank you for the continuous support and if you'd like us to chat about it anything you know put it on the YouTube channel or wherever you're watching this and we would love to talk about the subjects that you want us to hear about or you want us to talk about not hear about we want you to hear about and we will talk about it all right so be well and keep the faith.